Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to draw seven of the Cherry Blossom One Spiel here at the Potomac Curling Club. Our feature game on cheap B is green versus right. Team green has the red stones yeah, this evening, and uh, team right has the yellow stones. No, don't even bother. Don't worry. Very good. We're just getting underway in the first end. And uh, green has the hammer in this first end. Yep. If you're uh, on the live chat, uh, please just give me a shout out to say you're okay. Testing, just testing. I hear him. Oh, I'm on now, I think. If anyone's live in the chat room, you just uh, give us a quick shout out to say that you can hear us okay. Hey, we. it says we have 17 watching, so. Sorry to anybody who is listening. We are sorting out some technical technical snafus. All righty. My name is Courtney Shaw, and I am here with Andy Inglis. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Andy. Andy, how long have you been curling? I haven't met you here. Well, I'm pretty new to this uh, game. It's my first season at the Potomac Curling Club. Are you part of our Curling 101 program? No, I was in uh, just a bit before that. Ah, so when do you curl? We curl, uh, you know, Tuesday and uh, Saturday. Tuesday on the daytime league? Uh, matinee, yeah. Matinee, sorry. Awesome. Well, it's nice to meet you. And you too. All right, if you're just uh, joining us, this is our feature game on Sheep B this evening at the Cherry Blossom Festival, Bonspiel. And we have Team Breen in the Red Stones against Team Wright in the Yellow Stones. Yes. Yep. And I am just joining us in, in this commentary now. It looks like we are in Vice's 
rocks? Uh, so Right, it looks like the call might be to tap up the yellow into the red here. So red currently lying one shot here. The second of the vice stones is about to be delivered. Brian Breen is calling just a uh, down weight hit on that yellow stone. It's a little bit tricky. They can't hit it on the nose or it'll go off of their own red stone. But if they make this, they'll definitely be sitting one and two. I certainly can't speak to this game so far because I'm just tuning in, but I played on this sheet uh, earlier today and it was curling quite a lot. That was a fantastic shot by Nick Datlow. And in addition to removing the yellow stone, he also uh, promoted his own stone uh, to be in a little bit better position. Hey, we're up to 22 viewers. Excellent. Picking up steam. Good evening to all of you watching on the uh, live stream this evening. <laughs> so Team Wright just uh, pondering their options a little bit here. It's a bit, there's a lot of red in play in this first end. Yeah, fortunate for Team Wright, they had they do have the hammer and they have some guards out front that they can tuck behind. But I think Skip Lance right here has to make a, a good shot or they're gonna be in a bit of trouble. See so a bit of weight behind this one. Right. Oh. Oh. oh, it looks like he's playing a hit. We got a lot of stones moving. It looks like, well, Red still have the shot stone, at least. They do. 
but it's just full eight foot, so gives them a little more to work with. Unfortunately, there's a lot of rocks kind of in the front of the house. I'm trying to provide, we are both trying to provide unbiased commentary for this game, uh, despite the fact that there is a local team playing. That being said, 50% of this local team has very recently come to us from other clubs. Uh, lead Jason Fountain is from the Fort Wayne Curling Club, and uh, second, Adam Cap is, uh, he's, Jason Fountain is actually a permanent new member of the, the Potomac Curling Club. Adam Cap is just on loan to us from the San Francisco Bay Area Curling Club, who I have recently found out is in the process of raising money to get their own dedicated ice facility. They curl on arena ice currently, three separate clubs, um, or three, three separate hockey facilities on different nights of the week and they have been raising money and they are hoping to get a new facility built. Um, they're hoping for before next season. That sounds very ambitious to me, but I wish them the, the best of luck in doing that because I was a former arena ice curler and dedicated ice is much better. Yeah, that's great news. Uh, we wish them all the best to try yeah. to get their own dedicated ice. So Brian Breen is throwing what appears to be a hit, Might a bit of a tenuous hit. Oh, oh, and it does jam. Fortunately, though, he is, it, it's out counted by that one in the back house, so. So one stone for each team left to deliver now. Yeah. But he does, uh, he does leave Team Wright with a hit on a pretty open stone to take their deuce here in the first end. Oh, I beg your pardon, Beers. It looks like uh, Red actually has the uh, the final stone of this end. Oh, do they? Um, so. Oh man, I screwed that up. And so, still playing the hit here though. I'm going to remove that redstone from play, this is the shot stone, and then put a little pressure on uh, Team Breen. Well, that would explain why he played the hit, a hit with his first stone. I was thinking that was a little bit of a suspect call. Oh, no, this is curling a lot. Oh. Looks like he is just, oh, he did make contact rubbing off of his own. It was a bit of a fortuitous shot there. Not a bad result there. No, it's going to be actually really hard to remove that rock without jamming. It does look like it's all the way open, so I do think if they can get to the inside, they should be able to remove it cleanly for a possible score of, do you think that maybe three or four? We just have a look at the overhead camera here. Yeah, it's hard to tell on that front red, but it could be a score of three or four if the... Uh, this hit is made without jamming. Yeah, hard to tell exactly, but yeah, it looks very close between the uh, yellow at the back of the house there and one of the reds in the 12 foot. Whatever the situation with those outside rocks, shot is simple. Make the hit, take at least one, whatever, whatever the rest is is great. Stone's on its way. Sweeper's on this straight away. Oh, they're right off now. Must be pretty close. This looks great. Starting to curl. This is a fantastic shot yeah, by Brian. Good Brain. shot there. So now the question is how many points did he score? It's definitely looks like definitely three, maybe four. Yeah, it's gonna be close. Oh, looks like it's gonna be a measure. Yes, 
slightly difficult to tell on the overhead camera with the whether the uh, yellow at the back there is uh, out counting the uh, red on the front right as we're looking at it. Skip Brian was gesturing to me through the glass that he does believe that it is four points. And I would say from the overhead camera, I would have to agree. I'm not sure why they're measuring those reds at all. Or sorry, those back reds at all. Those look like a gimme to me, but. Sometimes it's just hard to admit when you've had a bunch scored on you and you want to measure just to make sure, but. Yeah, not the start that uh, Team Wright would be looking for in this first hand at all. That is true. But still a long way to go. Yeah, it's a long game. And uh, with uh, the way this ice has been curling, there's certainly been a lot of steals at play in uh, the ends that I've seen played thus far in this game. So, so we will see what the Decided on the score to be here. As we get ready for N2. I will say that uh, Team Breen, they do have two curlers that have some of the most attractive pants that are being worn <laughs> on the ice during this game, and really during this entire bonds spiel. Certainly it reminds me of Team Norway in the uh, Olympics. It does. They really pioneered the, the festive curling pant tradition. So we believe it was four red there in that first end. Well, they have yet to update their their own scoreboard. has not been hung. Brian Breen is confirming to me that it is it was four points. Okay, and so a center guard thrown there by uh, by Breen there. Just uh, quite close to the front of the house there. Looks like a this oh. is gonna try to draw behind but looks like it's gonna hit the guard. I uh, think I think that draw is coming in a little heavy and they realized they needed to get a bit of a wick off that guard to kinda get it to score to hang around. Or they could have been playing the Lisa Weagle tick shot. Could have been playing the tick shot there. It was a very successful tick shot, I would say. They left their rock shot stone and removed the center guard from play. So it's going to leave like it wide open for Brian Breen's lead, Jason Fountain, to come down and hit that. Absolutely. Stone's on its way. Sweeper's not on this one as yet. Looks like it's going to catch the stone pretty well. Needs to curl a little bit more, actually. In fact, oh, I just do uh, apologize. It sailed right by. That was actually a pretty straight line when uh, I played on this sheet earlier today, and that, that inside out turn coming towards the glass. This leaves a uh, team right with an opportunity to split the house and to try to get two rocks in play and maybe see if they can generate a deuce out of this end. I think that's the important thing to remember. Sometimes when you get down early, give up a big end, you think, well, gosh, I got to get all my points back in one end. But it's a long game. You just got to get rocks in play. Think about taking your deuce, holding your opponent to one. And before you know it, you're back in it. It's really absolutely, absolutely. not the end of the game by far. That draw does come up a bit light, though, but it is uh, a corner guard that maybe they will have the opportunity to use later in this end. Unfortunately, right now, they have rather guarded the redstone that's in there, but uh, yeah, a long way to go in this end. Looks like they're trying to hit again on this open yellow in the house. 
He's throwing a bit, bit less ice this time. Sweepers are on it, so that's a good sign. Hopefully it's close. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a nice hit there. And even a roll to the center. It's a nice shot. Oh, we're up to uh, 29 viewers now on the Yay. live stream. Good evening, everyone. Glad to have you with us. shot call is here. Looked like a draw ice broom. But oh, maybe the call was the freeze? It's looking like that's what it's going to be. If they can get it there. It's over curling a little bit, but they do get another rock into the house. Discussing the options here. Brian Breen discusses options, which included guarding their shot stone or drawing another one into the house. And second, Adam Cap is indicating that he would actually like to hit that yellow stone that's in the house, which I would wholeheartedly support that decision. Yeah, they're already in the lead with a big score in first end. And we have confirmed on their scoreboard, by the way, that it was four. Yes. And so there's no reason to introduce complications at this stage. No, you don't need to steal at this point. You just need to hold them to one or two. This is over curling and dramatically and makes contact with just a little bit of contact with the Yellowstone. Does tap their shot stone to the back of the house. And I have to say, I actually really like this call. Um, a lot of teens would say, wow, we're not shitting, Ooh, excuse me, we're not sitting shot stone and come down and hit that red and try to flop over to hit two. But you could leave, leave yourself sitting a double if you hit the on the nose or anything like that. But uh, what Lance Wright has asked his, his second here to do is to come down and freeze to this red stone. They're actually playing a little bit of a tap, so I mean that's the air side on this this shot, uh, and he did tap it through the house, so ended up being a little heavy. But I do I do like it when people call the freeze because I mean that's a really great way to make sure that they can't remove your stones and you have a lot of rocks left in this e in this end to try to you know remove that that stone and to really generate some points. Absolutely, and like you say, though, with that red traveling out the back of the house, there's now an opportunity here to take both of these out. Double. Yes. There is a possibility of a jam on that back red, um, but it does look like this is hanging a little wide. Looks like he'll definitely remove the one, but he's just going to nudge the, the other yellow stone. This is a little bit more of a conundrum. Oh, he's calling the freeze again. I like that. You know, you kind of make your opponents do the work for you when you play those freezes. As, you know, oftentimes they just are not comfortable leaving your rocks in the house, and, uh, and they'll often play the hit for you. Yeah, absolutely. Even if this rock over curls, it's still something that's in the house that the opponent has to deal with. It's a great way to, it's a, just a great way to generate some points. It's looking a little light here, though. This does Sweepers look light. Sweepers are going really hard, but I don't think they're going to be able to get it there. It's just. The line was up. perfect. Oh, that's a shame. So this leaves uh, Brian Breen with an opportunity to remove that shot rock, sit two with one of them behind a guard. 
it's unfortunately not the end I think uh, Skip Lance Wright was hoping Just for. squeezed by the guard there, and that's a nice roll behind the guard. Yeah, that a slightly difficult position now for our team right. That's a really fantastic shot. It does leave right with the run back double to kind of open things up a little bit, but that's certainly not an easy shot. And with the way the ice has been swinging, even with weight, these run backs are really tough. I, I had to play a couple of them myself in my early game, and I can't tell you, you know, we were just right off, right off, you know, not sweeping at all, and then they it cut over a ton, and it's a tough shot. Well, the stone is on its way. Certainly not going to be a straight run back here. I think they were trying to actually go around it, but they're not going to achieve that. Oh, and Oh, that's a fortunate jam that happened directly behind that corner guard. Uh, Still leaving the center of Red Rocks uh, in the middle of the house there. I think for Brian Breen, this is a situation where you kind of have to guard your your really good position and just get a center guard a little bit off center. Try to protect those rocks, that particularly that shot stone in the forefoot. It's really cutting down the scoring area for Team Wright. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Lying to if you guard, then you're asking the question of Team Wright, what can they do? What can they do? <laughs> they would have to either play a really tough draw or run it, which is a tough situation. We'll see if uh, Brian Breen has his draw weight on. Yeah, first of the skip stones coming up in this end. Skip stone underway, and the sweepers are working this one hard. Line looks pretty close. It's looking quite light, though. I think it may settle into a pretty good position, though. Man, that is curling yeah. a ton. But that's a nice guard there. That's a fantastic guard. So now, asking the questions of uh, Team Wright. Skip, just skip stones to come in this end. Red lying too. Fully guarded. This is one where I hate to say it sometimes, but I think as a skip, you know, you might want to try to find your draw weight and kind of come around everything and see if you can catch a piece of the button. The size is swinging so much that I think you can tuck a good amount of that rock even behind those rocks that are just in the four and even if it's open and they pick it out then you just threw the straw you have a chance to just repeat the shot that you just threw I think it's a good shot it does look like uh, draw is the call judging from the ice it's, been given here. it's a tough situation I don't think any skip envies the position that Lance Wright is in right now A little bit of a wobble there on release, but it's on its way. This looks like it's hanging a little bit wide at the moment, but does curl a lot on this sheet. Indeed. Sweep is working this really hard. Looks like it's very light. Oh, this looks really light. Yeah, that's not going to make it into the house there. And that's not what they wanted at all. Yeah, that's a tough situation for Lance. This gives Brian Breen an opportunity to... to... Uh, stick another rock in the house. I'm, he's actually, he's gesturing over towards their other rock in the house, which I'm not really sure what he's thinking here. I mean, they're sitting too in a very good position. That rock, well, it's under a guard. It, at this point, is inconsequential. 
I think what you do is you draw behind that guard that lands just through and sink another one into the forefoot and really shrink down that scoring area. Yeah, that would seem to be the, the clearest shot, but they are still looking at uh, that yellow, I think. I think he's going to play a low weight hit on that yellow, and frankly, I do not see the point of this shot. I suppose he's really thinking about he's got his third red in the back of the house there. If he does tap that yellow out, he could be lying four. Seems uh, like an aggressive play. I guess, but you know, you don't have the hammer here. You have to assume that your opponent's he just threw that draw. Hopefully he's got that shot to help him calibrate to throw the right draw. I think generally the goal should be to try to make that draw a little harder, but well, let's see what happens here. Stone's yeah. on its way. Sweeper's not on it yet. Looks like it has to curl a little bit. Oh, very close, and it does by. just sail right by. So and now it seems like the draw is the is the really only option here for our team, yeah. right? Yeah, it's not the easiest draw in the world, but he did just throw this line. So hopefully. He learned enough from his first rock that he can find pull four foot and take his one point. Well, it's a difficult shot, but uh, these are the shots that the skips uh, have to play. Unfortunately. They get paid the big bucks for, Absolutely. right? <laughs> At the conclusion of this end, I will make the rounds and try to get updates from the other sheets and report back as to how things are going on the rest of the games in progress this end. This looks like it's just going to sail through the house, unfortunately. Very wide and stayed wide. So that's going to be a score of uh, two red. Yes. So another two points, a steal of two for Team Breen there in the second end, which takes it to 6-0. Uh, well, Courtney is just uh, stepping out to uh, give us a scoring update on the other sheets, and we'll be uh, right back with the third end. Corner guard thrown there by uh, by Team Breen. Now it's the first lead stone for Team Wright. Sweeper's not touching this one yet. Just going to hang around at the back of the 12 foot there. And in fact, it is covered by the uh, red guard, at least partially covered.
that's going to be a nice center guard there for Breen. It's a good shot by the lead player there. Very colorful trousers. We do approve of that. draw this one in. They're just going to crash on the center guard there. So a bit of a few stones developing at the front of the house this end and I'm not sure that's really what Team Wright are looking for here. I think they would prefer to keep it a bit cleaner. Try to get back into the game, score one or two points in this end. Get their, get their name on the scoreboard. Stone deep and might go all the way through. No, it's going to hang around there in the 12 foot. And the uh, redstone is just biting in front of the house there. So Team Wright's going to try and draw behind. looks like it's going to be rather light so it's not going to make it in fact it's not going to make it across the hog line that is a hog stone there looks like uh, same shot for team green there going to try and follow draw behind there Sweepers on hard already. Sweepers trying to make take it as far as they can. And it's just going to get into the 12 foot. And in fact, that probably will be the shot stone. It's hard to tell between that front red and the uh, yellow in the left hand side of the house we're looking at it big yellow throwing some uh, weight here trying to remove that redstone okay I'm back it, uh, it was quite a roundabout trip trying to figure out who these teams on the other sheets were because I didn't know very many people. On sheet A, we actually have Ardsley, an Ardsley team versus a Schenectady team. It's uh, John Noble versus Jack Stapira. And right now, Ardsley is leading 1-0. Um, we have actually a lot of very low scoring games on sheet C. We have a Potomac team uh, skipped by Steven Enixon versus a team who I'm actually not sure where they're from, but it's Team Dunham. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And the score is 1-1. On Sheet D, we have a Plainfield team, and I don't actually have the name of that skip, versus a Potomac team skipped by Arthur Hewer, and that is also 1-1. Wow, it looks like we've got the high-scoring game today. <coughs> Yellowstone will be removed, and will the redstone hang around? It looks like it's just clinging onto the back of the 12 foot there. So this will be the first of the vice stones for Team Wright coming up. Sitting at 
least one already. Is it maybe two in the back? Yeah, I think the, the second yell there might be out counting the red fighter at the front. It's hard to tell because the camera is definitely sitting at the wrong side of the house to tell for sure, but. So it looks like a draw attempt here. This rock looks actually quite a bit late. Really working it. Yeah, Super's going hard. And I think you're right. I don't think it's going to make it. That's going to pull up just on the center line as a earned about a two, two and a half guard there. It's a little bit of a tough position for Brian Breen because I, I know when you're when you're in this position, you want to hit something. You're like, I'm up six nothing. But I think at this point, oh gosh, I'm not sure what he's calling. I really think with all those guards, your best your best bet is to just get one in there for shot stone. They don't even have a rock in the eight foot. But he appears to be calling some crazy yeah, slash. Yeah, might see some big weight here. Corner guard into something shot. I'm not sure not the sure. Uh, vice looks entirely convinced, but uh, he's playing yeah. the shot. Bless the heart of Nick Datlow, who is a good sport, a good sport to the end. Well, it wasn't played with that much weight in the end. So. Oh. Looks like uh, just a tap back. And who am I to judge? He plays whatever that shot was, and now Red is sitting. Definitely first shot, and maybe second shot too. Yeah, that's a great shot there by Breen. <laughs> I assume that was what he was calling. I kind of had no clue at the time, but... We'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. So. <laughs> there is a method to his madness. I'm sure he'll tell me about it later. Well, I think they'll be trying to uh, hit this red one and then maybe roll towards the center if they can get a roll. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I can't I can't actually tell which rock is second shot that's the red or the yellow. Oh, this no, looks like it's a little curling. narrow. Oh wait, he's going the other way, nope. sorry. Nope, it's good. Oh, no, it's gonna be I lied. Nose hit there. That's not a bad result there. That's definitely the uh, shot stone at the moment. And uh, Team Wright with the hammer, of course, in this third end. So they won't be too unhappy with the way this end has developed. Looking to get their themselves on the scoreboard. Sometimes I think that first point can really be a game changer. If you've given up a steal, you feel a little bad about the way things are going. You get a point on the board, and it really helps your morale. Absolutely. And really turn the momentum in a game. And as anybody who plays this game knows, it's all about momentum. And once you get it going in your favor, no stopping you. So the first uh, skip stone here for uh, Breen. Taking a, a pretty big amount of ice for this hit. Which would have me believe that I think they would like to roll behind the center guards if they could. It's a great shot if you make it, absolutely. I think priority one is removing that yellow stone. The roll is just icing on the cake. I think it has to curl quite a long way at this point. Looks like he released right pretty off. close to the broom. It was just a lot of ice. And that is just going to sneak past there. And that is a slight mistake there for uh, for Brian Breen. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a lot of weight. It just was, I think, a bit of a wrong ice call on their part. Yeah, let's see if they uh, make that correction later in the game. So an opportunity here for uh, Team Wright. Absolutely, to sink one in there. Fly two, maybe three. 
think they are trying to decide whether the yellow or the red at the front there is the second shot. They're as perplexed as I am. All right, so it's going to be a draw to the forefoot. Yeah, I don't uh, think it changes your, your choice of shots, Eddie, because I don't think there's much they can do about that rack at this point. That uh, red is under an awful lot of guards. There's not really any way to move it. The only thing they could hope for is to maybe nudge the rock a little bit. But I think at this point, you just try to get one buried, solidify at least one point, um, hopefully two. And if you are very fortunate, maybe three. Well, they're still discussing the uh, shot here. An awful lot of discussion. Maybe a change of plan? Oh, I'm not sure what they're doing. They seem to be coming the other way, inside out. Maybe trying to go around the yellow in the side 12 to 8 foot region and use that as a guard. Well, that does look like the call. Not quite certain what prompted the change of mind. Yeah, I don't know either. Seems like if you know if you draw to the uh, forefoot there, you're putting a lot of pressure on uh, Team Breen for the maybe the first time in this game. I would agree with that assessment. Well, the stone is on its way. It is. It actually looks a little light. Oh, they're just going on it now. Does look a little light. Let's see what the sweepers can do. No, it doesn't look like it's going to get there. No. And that is going to be a missed opportunity, I think, there for Team Wright. But they do have the hammer in this end, so. No, and they do have a pretty good guard uh, over the rock that they that is a uh, shot stone currently. It's maybe going to guard about half of it. It's hard, hard to tell from my current angle, but. It also actually, you know, I, I say this, it's difficult for either team to get into the forefoot with that rock. So, I mean, it's going to be hard for Brian Breen to get one in there, but it's also going to be hard for Lance Wright to get one in there. So, I agree. And in fact, I wonder now whether that was indeed the call all along to put the guard there. And oh, I don't think it was. That was, yeah. I just think they came up light on that one. Yeah. yeah, that happened a lot in our game. The ice was running a little bit slower than we were expecting, so we had a lot of rocks check up on us. And yeah. With the big curl, I think it's it's very likely it was happening to them too. So. Well, now there's going to be the uh, hit attempt here for uh, for Brian Green. He's going to try and hit and hopefully roll behind some cover. So it looks like Brian Breen is trying to make a hit, uh, play a hit on the shot stone. Oh, that God, guard. that is, wow. I wonder if that curled because that wow. thing, that was not a very natural rock movement. Not natural. That was not natural at all. So, I mean, that this is a great opportunity for Lance to sink another one in there. I mean, it could be for three, depending on, I suspect we'll see another measurement on those two rocks in the top of the house. Um, but it's definitely for two and maybe three. Expert commentary coming from my husband, Melvin Shaw. He thinks it looks like three yellows. Well, two yellows. Assuming he puts the third one in the house. Here's he was not here a minute and a half ago when he came up super light on his first draw. So we're hoping he's adjusted the weight. It's looking a little bit stronger this time. Yes. This looks fantastic, yeah, actually. Looks like a great shot. And that is going to be a perfect draw there. On the, it covers yeah, like the capital shot. on the pin. 
Great shot. I'm giving a solid thumbs up to Skip Lance right for, oh, wow, they kicked the rocks. They seem to knew, know uh, what it was without any sort of a measurement. And it will be three yellow there. So that's a great result oh, there for Lance that's Wright. Sweet. Uh, I have to step away from the broadcast for a minute, so I will leave you in the very capable hands of, of my co-host. <laughs> I was muting a little too quickly there. I will be right back. Okay, so that is 6-3 to uh, Team Breen after three ends, and we're just getting underway in the fourth end. Good result there for, uh, for Lance Wright's team, uh, scoring three in the third end to get right back in this game. That's going to give them a big confidence boost. Uh, looks like they're going uh, for center guard. Sweeper's having to work it across the hog line here. And it's going to make it across just fine. Coming to start round about uh, the two position there. So it looks like uh, Ryan Breen is going to just draw one into the house and the side of the house. Keep things nice and open. Sweepers on this one straight away, and it is curling a lot. Looks like this is going to come up a bit light. Oh no, they're going right into the wing. They they're are. running out of house here, but it looks they like are just exactly catching the 12 foot there. Good. He was hoping to get touching the 8 foot there, but that's okay there. Looks it's like a sucker shot, and Lance Wright is not falling for it. Yeah, it looks like they're going to ignore that red one and just go for the draw, and I think that's the right call. I would agree. Oftentimes, it's very hard for skips to ignore that rock in the house, and they want to go for the hit. But it does look like uh, the second rock by lead Shanidra Medita, and I hope I pronounce that at least sort of okay. It was a little bit heavy. So Brian Breen is looking to split the house. I assume he is hoping that this rock will travel on the outside of that kind of offset center guard that's in play. That does look like the call. They're going hard on it, but we're still on that guard. So this is, we got to come off a little bit to get by that guard. And he's going to tap that guard into, if anything, a, maybe a better position close to the house. I would agree that that is a better position for that guard. And uh, it does leave them a corner guard in play, but it was a, a tough shot, unfortunately not made. So but it, it gives Wright a chance to draw behind the center guard with second Howie Twifels Rock. And going the other handle this time. This one is hanging out there. I think it needs to come back to get past the guard. I think they're, are they by the and guard? And they are oh, going to sweep by the guard. Oh, just barely. But they couldn't sweep it, and it is, well, it's Look going to come to rest just by the forefoot. It's a good shot. It's a shockingly good shot. <laughs> my co-host enjoys my shockingly good shot commentary, but I mean, truthfully, it was like almost on that corner guard, but looked in there. Yeah, it did finish a lot at the end. Really well. Oh, the sweepers are right off this one. Yeah, they're trying to peel off that guard, but it looks like Adam got that shot a little wayward and is not going to make contact with anything. So this gives Wright an opportunity to either double guard, maybe put another one in the house. It looks oh, like look. they are going to do that and He's freeze on top aggressive. of their existing one. And yeah. it's great to see, actually, from uh, Team Wright. Their confidence is up after that nice score in the last end. Yes, I like it. This one's looking a little wide at the moment. 
Yeah, I'm afraid this one may not quite make the hook that the previous rock made. And it looks very heavy, too. Yeah, so just going to crash on the guard there. It is actually leaving for a really great shot um, as a second guard. But it does appear to have put potentially a, oh, I'm soliciting help. Oh, nope, I think that red is out of the house. I was concerned that they might have put a second red into the house, but that was actually a fantastic shot. They yeah, got rid of the uh, corner guard. They put up a second center guard. It's a really fantastic shot, albeit not the called shot. Nice. Right, always have a plan B in curling, isn't it? Exactly. much for the pronunciation on we'll just say Fanny's name. Funny, funny, not Fanny. Fanny is probably not his first choice of what to be called. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> and it looks like a draw attempt here for Team Wright. And the sweeper's on this hard. Looks like it's uh, a little light. Will sneak past that guard. Oh, this is a fantastic shot. Get that in the house, boys. And it is going to make it into the house. And that is a good shot. A really great shot there by Team Wright. Totally buried behind the guard. And uh, and things are uh, starting to look a little bit more difficult for Team Breen. Agreed. So it looks like they're calling for some weight here, trying to at least hit the open stone. Yeah. Sweeper's not touching this one yet. Looks pretty good. I think they're going to hang around, yeah. They're just going to get a slight roll there, and in fact, a great roll to be behind cover, the corner guard. And it does appear that it's second shot as well. So a good shot there for uh, Team Breen. Yeah, indeed, and uh, it's forcing Bright to try to follow this shot down. Behind that corner, try to outcount it. I have to say, if I'm team right here, I think about maybe trying to come around the center guard, but it could be a little bit early. This is, I believe, Vice's first stone. Is that Vice's first stone? I do kind of lose track from my passenger seat chair in the warm room, so I apologize, guys. That one will just draw touching the eight foot, and it is wide open. And it, well, I would think that, uh, well, Brian Breen's not sure what he wants to do here. He's so. thinking really hard about a shot that I kind of think there's only one choice on, but. I think you hit this rock. <laughs> Oh, looks like that's what he's deciding to do. And if he hits it on the inside, I think he might be able to come off of, uh, he can at least notch that one into the open. He might not be able to get much of a trickle behind. If you had it really thin, you can probably get the trickle behind. Oh. And I'm totally wrong again. He's going for the one that's buried behind the guard, I believe. Well, he's actually going to hit the guard. And well, it does chip oh. the Yellowstone out of cover. And it taps it in for shot and leaves a guard in play. The sleeping actually right with a great opportunity to throw another guard on this stone and actually try to protect shot stone and maybe see about getting a steal in this end. 
Let's see what they're planning here. A bit of discussion again. I would think that the guard should be the call here. I would think so. I'm not sure what else you really do at this point. Uh, I mean, I guess theoretically you could try to draw another one in. Maybe try to split off of the one that's in there. Sit two. The only problem is if you don't make that right, you leave a double. You don't want to leave a double. Stone just uh, on its way now. The sweeper is not touching it. Is it a little heavy? I can't tell. I've got no. so many curlers in front of me, I can't see what's happening. Looks like it's going to just come and bite the house. They're bringing it in there, and that is a good result there, I think. I think. They may be able to remove two of those, but yeah. I don't think they'll get all three. It's a tough double. Triple might be there, but I think the triple champs on that red that's in the side. Yep, yep, eight yep. foot. Hard to say who's lying second shot here. It's very close between the, uh, the red and those two yellows. Yeah, I think it's red. That'd be my money, but. Nonetheless, it leaves with Brian Breen with only one shot option, which is to light this up. It looks like we'll see a bit of weight here with this uh, <laughs> shot as uh, Brian makes his way down for the first of his skip stones. I have to watch my language a little bit, but they're going to light the situation up. Brian Breen has been known to throw a bit of a rocket when it comes to takeout weight. Yep. This one is not hurting for weight. It's hurting for line, but... Oh, he, cho he actually moves everything. It's actually a really fantastic shot. Still leaves a uh, yellow shot stone there. But it has opened things up. Yellow is sitting one, but at least the forefoot is open up, uh, opened up and will allow him a shot to score. So Lance Wright just making his way down for the last of his uh, stones in this end. <laughs> Looks like the redstone is second shot at the moment, judging from the overhead camera. Yep, I would agree. I'm not actually sure what they're calling here. Yep. Yep. Possibly they're just guarding their shot stone. Come on, guy, make a move. Oh, maybe. It's not a bad call at this stage. Put some pressure on uh, on Brian's team. Yeah, the draw has not been Brian's strongest shot, so. Well, that's a nice guard. Force him to make a, force him to make the draw. I think that's a really good shot. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. How about those? Nice week, guys. It looks like they will simply try to draw for one. That would be the most sensible shot, or even use that yellow as some backing if they want to come in with a little bit more weight and shift that. But they would have to roll if they went for that option. Yeah, I'd say this is probably just a straight draw. Just have to touch forefoot. And this is a uh, skip spread and butter, a draw to the forefoot. Why do they get paid the big bucks? This looks like 
like it's coming with a little bit too much weight, maybe. Yeah, sweepers are right off this one, although it's slowing up. It actually looks... And that looks it like looks it's... slows from here. And can they sweep it oh. far enough back? Yeah, he does. Yeah, good sweep there by the skip. It's a steal of one. Yeah, that's another point there for Team yeah. Wright. And they are coming right back in this game. Yep. That makes the 6-4 after four ends. Try and get a scoring update for you on the other sheets. Keep you up to date with what's happening here. In the meantime, we're getting underway with the fifth end here. Uh, Breen against Wright. And it looks like a, well, it's the skip is coming out to help this one. Looks like it's very light. Looks like Bunny's a little bit late on his first rock. It is cutting hard. Makes me wonder if that. It might have been a funny release, but it could have uh, maybe got a little debris under it. Well, they did, they did sweep it across the hog line, but it's uh, more of a corner guard, a very high corner guard. It does, and uh, gives an opportunity for Jason Fountain to lead for Team Green to put a rock behind that corner guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweepers, sweepers on this one quickly. Hard. Maybe got it started a little bit. It's going to be really tight to this guard. Oh. Wow, they just made it just by. Just got it by. But it is a little heavy, and it will go out the back. So empty house at the moment for, uh, for Team Wright. It looks like they might try to repeat that shot. That's a better line by uh, the lead this time. Needs to curl up a bit. And it's starting to move now. But they are going to leave that uh, as uh, another guard. So they're looking at the draw behind here, uh, Brian Breen's team. Going to draw behind the uh, yellow guard that's closest to the house. Give Jason another shot to make this. Looks like this one might be a little light. Sweeper's going hard on this one. It looks like they will bring it into the house, just, just barely. not getting the uh, berry there. So it will be available to hit, be hit by Team Wright. Wright wants to hit and roll away from the center. I'm not sure I would agree with that. I'd say the hit and stay right where you are. That being said, you won't be in the house, but you have a good usable rock out front. Kind of the cornerstone of uh, stealing is controlling the front of the house. So. This one may be a little bit wide though, so we'll see if it comes back enough. And no, it will not, not quite. Well, not too much damage done there for uh, Team Wright, but it does hand the initiative over in this end. Yeah, it's allowing Green the opportunity to play the tap on this rock, get one buried behind those corner guards, leave one out front. Seem fairly happy with this one so far. 
I think it's a little bit wide. They're going hard on, on weight now, but I think it's just going to be a bit on the light side. They might get a slight tap here. And they and do. And they do, but there is a double available there. Indeed. They're sitting two for the moment, but... So they are going to play the hit here. Again, this one appears to be hanging a little wide. Oh, it's moving now. I think it might jam now. Yeah, and it will jam. And it looks like the yellow will hang around there. It's spilling the jam red into the open, though. So it looks like the... Brian is going for the uh, same idea again, a tap. Split yeah, a bit the of red. a split, I think. Yeah. Expect we'll see a little bit more weight out of Adam here. Yeah. 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 This is a fantastic shot. It's a really good shot. That's a good result. That red is, maybe you can uh, see a little bit of it, but it's pretty well buried. And uh, Lance Wright is being, I would say, somewhat suckered into this shot. He is trying to hit a rock that does, at least from my vantage point, appear to be a little bit buried to try to flop over in front of Shot Stone. It's actually a tougher shot for his lefty vice than it might be for a right-handed curler. Yeah, that's a good point. And this one, I think they're on this straightaway, they're inside the line there. Oh, this is moving a ton. And that is not going to be the result. He may of this actually one. get the run back on his own. Oh, it didn't have very much weight either, so ends up just taking the red in, putting it in actually a shockingly interesting spot. It's third shot for the moment, but we got a few rocks left here. So to give you guys an update from the other sheets on Team A, we have uh, the Ardley team skipped by John Noble is up three to one against uh, Stapira from Schenectady. On sheet C, we have Enixon playing Dunham. Um, Enixon is currently down. Yeah. Are they down, Melvin? Oh, they tied it. My husband provided me with a score that was three to two, but in the meantime, it appears they've hooked the fifth end. And after five ends, Team Enixon is tied three to three. Oh, you don't really need to cross that out. I recorded it. He changed it officially on the paper, so we're all good to go. On sheet D, we have uh, another Ardsley team. Oh, wait, sorry, that's sheet A. Um, on sheet D, we have Plainfield. Still don't know who the skip is on that team. Versus uh, Arthur Hewer from the Potomac Curling Club. And Arthur Hewer is leading yep. four yep. to two. This looks like more or less a draw weight shot here. Looks like they're going to tap on that red. No, in fact, they will go past that red, but it will stick around in the back of the house. So, lying too red at the moment. And of course, red does have the hammer in this end. So things are shaping up quite well for Team Breen right now. Yeah. This kind of falls into the category of what do you do to not hurt your current situation? Because you're sitting two, both of those rocks are wide open. There's not an easy double on those two. What you've got to do is just put a third one in there in a spot that really preserves this really good situation that you have. Sweepers are on this one quickly. I 
think it might be a little bit light. Wow. Oh, we have a burned rock. That's unfortunate. They got distracted by each other's pans and somebody lost control of their <laughs> broom. So a little bit of a let off there for our team, right? And they've got an opportunity here to um, help themselves out here. So they're thinking about a hit on the red that's shot still right now and a slight roll um, behind the other ones. If they can do that, they will lie in a very uh, useful position. Although that will leave Brian Breen the run back of his red. Well, let's see what the uh, shot will be as uh, Lance makes his way up for the first of his stones. Lance is wearing a very attractive hat. I'm not sure the origin of this hat, but I, for those of us from the Midwest who may be tuned into this broadcast, it for me is very reminiscent of the hats that they wear at Steak and Shake, though a much more formal version. I have to admit the, that reference is uh, slightly lost on me. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that means, but all you guys in the Midwest, though. Oh, Steak and Shake is amazing. That drew a smile from our uh, camera operator, I would just like to uh, point out, <laughs> who is also from the Midwest. Nice. And so they executed the tap and roll there pretty well. That's a really nice shot. It's about half buried, which is about uh, a little less than half buried. It's about my favorite thing to throw when you're looking at Skip's rocks. Full buried is is great, but half buried is better because it makes them think about it. It's like, do I want to play the hit? Do I want to play the draw? Full buried, they're always going to play the draw. Half buried, you really make them think about it. And it looks from the ice like he is playing the hit. So this is a good opportunity. I mean, if he makes the shot, this is going to be uh, a likely three score for Team Green, which is going to be uh, a good situation for them. But at the same time, a miss on this shot will be very tough because he'll give up another steal. Oh, Super's on immediately there. You're worried about the line. Suspect a little tight out of his hand. Well, and off again. Oh, so. it's curling like oh. crazy. Nick Datlo is trying to call for the Maybe run back. Maybe go for the run back here, yeah. And that <laughs> is a perfect run back. And that yellow will just hang around, but. Uh, looks like it's for two. <laughs> there are heavy cackles from the war room. Still uh, one more shot to go from each team, so. Oh shoot, one more shot, darn it. So right have uh, one la last opportunity to uh, to help out their situation, but it's not that obvious what the shot is here. <laughs> Looks like they it's are. It's not totally obvious because uh, that would appear to be a draw broom. Currently two against, so. He's very definitive about it. Maybe he's just trying to freeze to the nose of it to. Just cut it down to one? Yeah. Oh, this, this one's is really hanging. hanging out quite there. wide. Oh, Starting yeah. to move. Do they have the weight? Line's fantastic, but. I don't know if he has the weight. Going to oh. just come up a bit light there. And it is lying too red at the moment with hammer still to come. I'm using, being told it might be three red, in fact. Well, we're not sure about the third, well, who's third shot here? Expert commentary, Melvin thinks that it's three, but I think it's only two. But a good opportunity here for uh, Brian Breen to uh, just a simple draw to the eight foot. Will be at least three. 
And it's really hard to see how Team Wright would come back from conceding a, another score of three in the fifth end. Yeah. I will say very good sportsmanship from Team Wright. It was actually Lance Wright himself who put the rock out for Brian Green, um, not his own front end who should be doing those duties. Oh, it's always nice to see that in, in a curling game. Yes. Solid sportsmanship. And so will be the draw here for uh, for Brian. I think he was signaling that he pushed it a little bit there. I don't know. The weight looks pretty good to me. Yeah. Curling. Sweeper's going hard now, really trying to hard. hold it past that oh, yellow, Woo! and they will, Nelly, and that is a great draw. Shot. <laughs> Even some fist bumps from uh, Adam and Jason on a very good sweeping job. And so that will be at least three red, and we will see who the fourth shot is. And they are going to have a measure here. I think they just left that measuring device on the sheet because they knew they were going to measure like every other end. It's always nice to see the measuring device out on the sheet. Keeps it interesting. <laughs> this is for uh, potentially, is this for the third or the fourth point? I think it's for the fourth point. Oh, yeah. That would be a, a big end to give up for, for Team Wright. There's a lot of gesturing coming on from over there. What's, what's the news? We were just debating the uh, fourth shot between us a little bit. Ah. Here. What does the operator think? Oh, I just think I finally figured out how to use this. <laughs> you, turn, you turn her back off again? Man, it's brutal. I wasn't sure I had the right button there. Uh, I uh, accidentally uh, muted uh, my operator earlier. I apologize for that. And She's it was doing a fantastic job. It was indeed a score of four there, wow. and so it is now 10-4 to Team Breen. And we will play the sixth end. And so now Lance Wright's team will have the hammer, but a long way back for them, three ends to play. This one's looking a little light. I'm not actually sure what the call was here. Is he trying to draw into the house? I think so. I think the call was to In draw corner. into the the eight foot there at the side and just keep things nice and simple. Yep. And they will sweep it to the 12 foot. Oh, there is a big update on D. She D is Plainfield Skip Unknown versus Arthur Hewer from the Potomac Curling Club. And it is now tied 5-5 five, five after five ends. A corner guard going up here from Team Wright if it will make it over the hog line, which it will. Just the very high guard there. And the trouble with having a guard that high is it leaves a lot of room for both teams to draw around. I think that score may have been spurious. From what I can view of the scoreboard, it does appear that Arthur Hewer is up 5 4 after 5 ends. Well, we'll have to work on uh, verifying that for you. We may have to cut. Cut down Melvin's 60-minute IPA intake 
as he is our score checker. Uh, on sheet C, we have Stephen E. Nixon from the Potomac Curling Club versus Team Dunham. And there's a lot of crossed out numbers, but from what I can see from my visual field, it is 3-3 three, three after five ends. And uh, Lance, right, just calling for the draw behind the, their corner guard that they put up after the uh, stone from the Team Breen lead uh, just uh, slipped through the house. And this is curling very quickly. Sweepers are doing their best to hold it, but it hasn't got the weight, I don't think, so it will tap on their other guard and split them. It does leave them with a little bit better center guard situation, which is, you know, what you'd like to have when you have a hammer. Uh, my last update, uh, sheet A, sorry for the delay on that, is after five ends, it is, oh, I see, I was misreading it. The five is the number of ends that they played. Melvin is using a very cryptic system to update us on the scores that was not completely apparent to myself. But so, Ardsley team, John Noble versus Stapira from Schenectady. Uh, Ardsley is lengthening their lead. It is 4-1 after five ends. Well, Team Breen did peel the center guard there, um, despite not having the hammer, but I think they want to keep things simple at this point with a big lead. Don't want to have any complications. It's a pretty good idea. They've got one in the house. They've got a big lead. I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, don't mess around. And keep I it clean. think they are Lance is calling for the freeze here on that uh, red in the house. But Guard or freeze, either way, getting a rock in play. Oh, oh this dear. Is very late, not making it over the hog lane. Well, that's a shame there. That's a hog stone there for Team Wright and a missed opportunity. <laughs> so I think they will be, Team Breen will be going for the draw behind the corner guard. So quite a wide corner guard, so they will be looking to end up in the 12 foot, I think. It is also a good amount of weight on it. I think uh, maybe there was a little bit of a miscommunication between the sweepers and the skip because he had them sweeping for line, anticipating a little bit more curl out of that rock than they were gonna get given the uh, the weight of the shot. Yeah, so trading errors there a little bit, uh, two teams. And so I think Lance is gonna try and repeat their shot from last time, but this one needs to curl a long way. Sweepers are right off here. Needs to sit down as well. And it will slip out the back of the house there. So difficult end for both teams. And I think the Team Breen repeating the same shot. Just a little less weight required this time. Trying to draw behind the corner guard. Sweeper's not touching this as yet. This is looking to be a pretty good shot there. Just needs to slow down, but it will stick around in the 12 foot. And it is behind cover. So a good shot there. Yeah, it's an interesting shot call because uh, T. Green does not have the hammer here. So 
Putting that rock in the back of the house behind the corner guard is a little bit of a suspect call in my opinion. Um, you know, you get really baited into drawing behind these corner guards when you don't have the hammer because you kind of want to beat your opponent there. But it really requires that you make that shot perfectly because now it's leaving Lance Wright's team an opportunity to put him behind that corner guard in a better position. I mean, they are coming up a little bit short on this rock here, but uh, but I mean, it's just my two cents. I'm one one curler of many, but. Well, I do agree with you. I think if you're playing that shot, you really want to be above the T-line. Absolutely. That, so that the freeze is not such a good option. Yeah, somebody might consider peeling that guard. It's pretty long, and this is pretty swingy ice, so. You know, I'm not sure that peeling it necessarily gets you anything. You'll probably hit almost anything they put behind it. You know, your better shot is probably to put one open in the forefoot, try to cut down, cut down the scoring area. Absolutely, and that's a good shot there by uh, Team Green. A uh, nice hit and roll. Yellow goes out, and the red is now going to be difficult to remove yes. as it's staggered with the uh, original red that was already in the house. So Lance Wright has called uh, the freeze right, right in front of uh, that shot stone on the in the full eight foot. If he gets one in position there, it's going to be actually quite difficult to remove. I think we've got good ambient ice coverage going on in this web stream. Oh, a tragedy is hitting, hit team right. Uh, their freeze has come up short. So things not shaping up as well for team right as they would like in this end. And remember, they need a big score here to stay in this game, a 10-4 down. In the sixth end. That is true. And I think if they don't get a big score, we may see some handshakes here, Courtney. We might. It might be nice to switch to a game that's a little bit closer. On Sheet C, we have actually a team that is previous champions of this event. Um, so they're having a, actually a very tight match. So. If we do get handshakes on this on this sheet, we might consider uh, switching over to the other sheet, variety with a little bit of bonus coverage of a pretty good game. I might recruit my score getter Melvin Shaw to find out where this team is actually from. On yeah, this one is looking a little light here from. Uh Green sweepers sweeping very hard. And that will come to a stop just uh, in, f in fact, I think they will make it a biter there. Can't quite tell if we take a look at the overhead camera, we might be able to see. Our overhead camera actually seems to have something in front of it, the view. sure how that happened <laughs> yeah that is rather strange we'll uh, get back to you with that <laughs> but we think that red is biting uh, <laughs> the random thing that is of ever so slightly obscuring our view of the overhead camera on, on our feature sheet the old guys from Napanee? Is the club that they're from Napanee? But they're the old guys from that club. <laughs> On sheet C, we have Steven Enixon from Potomac curling against the old guys from Napanee. And I have yet to actually yeah. ascertain if Napanee is their club or their town or both. And that's another uh, light stone there for uh, Team Wright. That's going to end up as a center line guard, more or less. And I uh, don't think that's what they're looking for in this end. No, that is really unfortunate. Um, 
they have they had a really decent situation setting up for them. Even though there's a lot of reds in play, they had a lot of space to work with, scoring area left to be had. Um, it's a little bit disappointing that that came up late. We were really having trouble with the speed on these sheets earlier, so I suspect that might be a continuing issue. Um, it's just it's really hard to talk yourself into throwing what seems like way too much weight. And so this is the last one for uh, Brian Breen here. And uh, just playing the draw. Try right, to draw another one in. They're already lying four shots here. And they're really putting the pressure on. And they're sweeping hard to try and bring it in. I'm not sure if we can actually switch our cameras over. Do we have the ability to switch over to sheet A, the overhead camera? Uh-oh, our operator is a little bit perplexed. Hang on. So this is the hammer in this uh, sixth end, and uh, Lance Wright is up against it here, and he needs to, well, he needs to draw pretty much full eight foot, just a little bit better than full eight foot to get his one. But one is not really what they're looking for at this stage. Can you switch to sheet eight overhead? I, we have sort of competing interesting events going on. We have the hammer on our feature sheet, but on sheet A, we actually have every single rock in play, minus one. We're trying to get a... And it looks like Lance is, has made the draw there for his we one. Made and the that draw. is a great draw to the forefoot. Uh, you can't see it on the house cam either. We're looking, so uh, we had two exciting but things But it's not enough there once. for Lance, and they are shaking. Despite that excellent draw. Oh, they took they took the one and shook. So and I on sheet one, after all of those rocks in play, it looked like it was a score of one, I believe. But and so that is uh, game over here on uh, sheet B, and it will be 10-5 to uh, Team Breen, and that is a good win for uh, for Brian's team there. Indeed, uh, I'm trying not to be too bitter because they are the team that knocked us out of the first. Uh, we'll be uh, right back if we can uh, sort out some coverage for the other sheets. Yeah, we can get some bonus coverage, I think.
Okay, guys, we are panning the cameras over and getting our stuff in order. It looks like we've got our cameras in order, and we are moving over to the game on Sheet C, which is a very tight matchup between uh, previous Cherry Blossom Bondspiel champions, uh, Team Steven Enixon with Katherine Koslick, Ann Hewitt, and Jer subbing in tonight is Jeremy Vanden Hooten. This team previously had uh, a former Potomac Curling Club member named Kim Belf on it, but that's the team that, that previously won this event. But. The more uh, recent iteration of this team with some uh, very good friends of mine, so I'm happy to see them having a nice tight game. Draws coming in from Skip Steven Enixon. Uh, clears the guard by just a hair. Sweep to Barry, looks like it's just past the T line. So it's 4-4 uh, four, four after seven ends there on sheet C. Yeah, it's very tight. A lot of singles being scored in this game. So I think we'll see some pretty aggressive plays, some guards out front played by uh, the Potomac team, trying to get their steal. How many people are actually watching? This is not this is not my largest viewership ever. So the first stone uh, being delivered now for uh, Team Anderson. And this is very key that this rock stays in front of the house because that is going to hang out a little bit wide. We're going to get it nice and tight, though. Really good sweep judging by Katherine Koslick and Jeremy Vanden Hooten, the new power couple of the Potomac Curling Club. <laughs> the new power couple. So it looks like uh, calling for the draw behind here from Team Dunham. I do like this call. A lot of people play ticks and whatever wonky draw to the side nonsense that they want to play, but... But I think the Zeiss is very swingy. Oh, don't, this is don't sweep that light. over. And it is going to be another center guard, in fact. Oy. That's a tough rock for Team Dunham. Probably would have been better just to leave that one on the far side of the hog line. Yeah, they do not want to be clogging up the uh, center line at this point with Indeed. the hammer. Indeed. This gives Ann Hewitt a chance to draw behind two center guards and... Uh, this is a shot that she makes a lot of the percent of the time. Looks like this one might have a little bit too much weight on it. Yeah, Sweeper's not touching it at all right now. It's um, actually coming in nicely. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, no! and a pick. Oh, oh, that was a huge pick there, and that, that is really unfortunate. Huge pick. Yeah. And, uh, 
Oh, the sweepers look really disappointed. That one was actually tucking in perfectly. I thought it was going to be heavy, but it looked like it was going to tuck into the top four under those guards. That was just really disappointing. There's not much you can do about those. No. And I, I, a lot of people say, oh, you should be cleaning, but I've seen enough picks when people are cleaning rocks. I don't know that that really necessarily does anything. So the call from Team Donham is to try to get one in the house, but they are also coming up short with the center guard. And I have to say, um, this house is shaping up very, or house, there's nothing in the house. This situation is shaping up very nicely for the team that wants to steal this end, which is Steven Enixon, which is asking second Jeremy Vanden Hooten to try to bury one behind these center guards and see if we can uh, Ruin the day for Team Dunham and steal one in the eighth end. There so far do not appear to, oh, there was just one steal in this game, a steal of one in the third end from from uh, the Enix and team. The weight on this looking a little bit heavy. The line looks good, but this is gonna slip to the back of the house. But still not a bad rock. It is dead buried. It's only in the back four. Still a really decent rock out of Jeremy Vanden Hooten. Wish we could get that shot out of him sometimes in our mixed team. And uh, it looks like they're interested in tapping the yellow that's just at the front of the house there. I overheard the skip calling for a tap. But it is a lot of ice for a tap. It's not a bad shot to try to get that guard out of the way, but I'd say you might want to mix things up with a little bit more of a hit weight situation. This one. Even just tapping that one is not really going to help you unless you get shot rock out of it at this point. And this is actually coming, to coming help in here. nicely. Uh, this this looks like a really nice. nice shot. Oh, it's just a little bit short. That's a heartbreaker for Team Dunham. I think if you're Steven Enix and you've got to kind of guard for your life at this point, you've got shot rock at the back of the forefoot. Jeremy Vanden Newton saying he thinks the guard is very dangerous, but I'm not really sure what else you do at this point. That's a little early to be playing. Yeah. The guard is definitely dangerous, but I think you got to get a good guard in play and hope for a miss out of Team Team Dunham and to get your second rock in there. You only need to score one if you're uh, Team Enixon at this point, so you've got your one. I mean, you certainly can't hit that yellow rock that was just thrown. Throwing the double on the two yellow rocks, uh, the center guard and the sh second shot rock is certainly a little bit risky for those of us playing at this level. Um, it looks like they are playing for the guard, but you have to get a good guard here, otherwise there's a real opportunity for Team Dunham to uh, tap back their yellow onto that red. This actually looks like a fantastic shot. It's over curling a little bit. Oh. Could do with a tick off the, no. Yeah, it's a good shot. It, it over curled. I do think they may possibly have that tap up on that yellow. It's hard to tell from the angle of where I'm sitting. They are looking at that shot. Skip following that. I've been uh, I've been confirmed that they do have that shot from my husband Melvin Shaw, who is hovering over my shoulder and giving me play-by-play -play commentary from the bench. Can't afford to play too much weight here, but the sweeper's on this straight away. I'm worried about the line. They get by this. Is, oh, they are on those guards. Uh, that's unfortunate. It's a tough, a tough break for these guys. So it does leave, it does leave that yellow in the side of the house, an in-off opportunity. But I think Steven Enixon has to play the guard at this point. <laughs> They're talking about being greedy. I don't think it's being greedy trying to get your one. One is all you need to win this game. There's no bonus points for winning by several. And they are going to play the guard. I think uh, you got a good person throwing this rock, Catherine Koslick. She uh, is a very talented curler, throws 
really nice draw weight. Jeremy Vanden Heuvel sweeping that rock actually oh, before she let go Skip of it. Skip is coming out straight away to help with the sweeping here. The Mustang is very light. Oh, it's over curling. But it is going to make it across the hog line there. It overcurled the hair, though. I think it was maybe a little alarmist sweeping, if you do ask my personal opinion. Yeah, a few um, nerves here in this final end, perhaps. Indeed. It does, it, it did, overcurling does allow, I believe, this shot to still be played. This low, you know, back house weight tap on that yellow rock that's in the top four. And that appears to be what Dunham is going for here. This will be the uh, third attempt at this shot, I believe. And uh, they had a good look at the line here, so. Indeed. Just Hopefully. need the perfect weight. Hopefully after a few attempts, they can make this shot. It's a very uncharacteristic way that that, uh, that that third is holding his broom. And they are sweeping this hard. Oh, line looks actually pretty good on this one. Is it by the guard? No. Oh, no. And they will tap their own existing stone a little bit, but it doesn't change the situation very much there. A lot of guards out front here collecting. We have one, two, three, four, five. Indeed, I think we give uh, Catherine Koslick another shot to throw this guard here. Prevent this tap that they don't seem to be able to make. Just needs to make a small adjustment from her previous attempt. Yeah. A Little bit more weight, a little bit more line, and this shot should be perfect. I think the line is looking pretty good. Oh, sweepers are going hard, and it actually, is this over the hog line? They're coming uh, it's off It's coming of up it. light, and it is It's over curling a bit over. again, but I think this one we might have needed that early alarmist sweeping that we saw <laughs> <laughs> on her previous rock, uh, and it's leaving Dunham to play the same shot yet again for the fourth time. And they just need one success here and then they'll be in a good position. Oh, a little bit of a trip there by the sweeper, but he's okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's tripping on. There wasn't much there. This, this one has much good. better line. Question is. Do they have the weight? Oh, oh. This is a good might. shot. That is a great shot there. That's a pistol. Maybe we look at the house cam, we can see that they are lying shot now. Yeah. Falls under the criteria of how many times are you going to give them the opportunity to try that shot before they make it? And the answer was four. Yeah, just not making that guard uh, a few minutes and they had a few opportunities there. Yeah. So looking at the uh, raise there, the promote on their existing red. This is uh, Skip Steven Enixon's first rock, and I must say, this is certainly not the kind of uh, house you love to be looking at when you're a Skip, a tough situation. Absolutely, he's got to Judge his angles very well here. Thinking about it long and hard. These are tough shots because you have two options. You have the option of hitting it, tapping it at just the weight that it'll stop in the spot that you want it to stop, or you use the shot as a backer. And uh, each is, you know, a challenging shot in and of itself. This is I don't I don't envy Steven in trying to make this shot because this is the game possibly a game winner or a game loser and very challenging. Absolutely. Uh, hard to see many other good options for uh Steven Nixon at this point. Yeah. So they are committed to this shot. Just taking his time here, a big shot coming up. 
Making sure that they're happy with the line. Uh-oh, he's tightening the broom up from the hack. Looks like a pretty tight broom for the rock that he's running back. I assume he's doing this at hit weight. And a stone is on its oh. way, and the sweepers are on. On it hard. And this is not looking like he's got the line. It's curling out of his hand. And that is not the result that they wanted. This is disastrous. Though, I will say, for his next shot, I would love to see him consider that in-off on the other side of the sheet. Really think uh, hitting the red shot that just jammed in that side eight foot, 12 foot region, that shot is wide open and it's set up perfectly. Even if he makes that, if he makes that in off and spills out the back, he still shot stone in the back of the house. I feel like that's the shot that he needs to make to win this game in his next rock. So now, Team Dunham looking at their options. They're already lying shot stone. May consider a double tap here and remove that red from play entirely. Are they taking out the in-off capability? I'm really not sure. I was quite full of the shot call there. I was trying to procure more gin. Looks like they are going for the hit on that red, oh, judging from the handle. This rock is curling a lot. This is not even going to come near to hitting the rock they want to hit, at least from my seat. Well, they will tap it. Well, they will brush it, and excuse me. And that doesn't really change the situation very much. I mean, much. it was like T-line weight. Oh, my God, he's looking at the same shot again. He hates this in-off. Yeah, he does not fancy that. Why but does he hate me so much? This is so much of a harder shot. Steven Enixon, you are looking at the wrong side of the sheet. Well, they are playing the same raise again. They need to make a big adjustment from last time. Yeah. And this is the final That's stone. An understatement, so if maybe. this does not come off, then they are out of the game. I mean, that in off is just really. I, I mean, I'm going on record here saying I think that's a much easier shot than this long run back, angled run back that he's playing. I mean, if he makes this, he's going to make a fool out of me, but you don't make a fool out of me that often. Well, the stone is on its way. And the line looks better. If I needs to curl a bit here. Uh, here we go. Oh, oh, wow, what a shot there. That's an amazing And in result. the classic of what I have always said, that it's better to be lucky than good. Steven and the crowd are, literally are going wild here in the, the warm room. They are literally shot. going wild. But it still is hammer for Team Dunham. So. Yes, and uh, unfortunately the shooter did roll into an open position leaving him backing for his draw for one point to win this game. Well, you have to hand it to him. He raised a difficult shot, and he made it right on. I wouldn't say right on, but he did make an iteration of that shot. Well, let's, let's leave it like that, yes. An iteration <laughs> of the correct result. I'm a tough crowd. I can appreciate that. <laughs> so it looks like the only option for... Um, Team Dunham, here's the draw to the button. Not a bad option, though. He's got just about all sorts of rocks to catch his, his rock. And here comes the final stone of this game. The 
there. It does look like a solid amount of weight, and it looked like with his release that he kind of got it going wide. Yeah, it looks Not like sure that we're going to hook in enough to... Wow, it is. it's wow, hooking that is like turning. crazy. What's crazy. it doing? And it is just going to be a little heavy, and it's oh. just going to run by, and that means it is a steal. Wow, a surprising finish of this game. And Team Enixon does get the win there. Wow, what a tense finish. And that is a great result there with that great raise. That is something. So the final score there, I think 6-4 uh, to uh, Team Enix in there with a steal of two in the final end. Good job. I wasn't even paying attention. Um, it does look like uh, before we conclude, um, on sheet A, uh, the Ardsley team, Team Noble, is up currently five to two going in there in the eighth end. Ardsley has the hammer, so they just need to prevent a steal of three, so I think they're in pretty good shape. Um, we had a bit of a end of the game blowout on sheet D, uh, where red, which Red was, oh, Plainfield. Plainfield made a dramatic comeback on sheet D to beat, oh, they took the score down, but Plainfield beat Arthur Hewer of Potomac Curling Club uh, in a lot to not a lot. And so I think we'll be uh, taking a little break and then we'll be back for the next drop. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye.